I think we've all clicked on videos with some seemingly well-credentialed fellow with his fancy edits saying things like, these are the 10 exercises to avoid at all costs. And what you find or what I've found is just through experimentation and thinking for myself and taking accountability for why I may get hurt on these exercises. These were actually the exercises that I needed to do to not only get more jacks, but get stronger as well. Five in particular. So you comment, let me know, which exercises have you been told that are just super dangerous that you started doing and you suddenly got more jacks? Let's just see how many we have in common. I'm gonna share five of mine. Real quick, before we get started today, exciting news, guys. Uh, I approached the Gaines Goblin last night, got on one knee, and I said, hey, Gaines Goblin, will you marry me? She said, yes, here's what the ring looks like. Um, very beautiful moment, I'm very happy. I uh, just wanted to fill y'all guys in because I know I've been talking about it a little bit in the comments. Now this video has to be prefaced with the fact that no movement, no movement is inherently dangerous or something that you should avoid, provided that you one, consult your doctor and you find that you're not at an increased risk for injuring yourself with weight training. Two, you appropriately load it, meaning you use a load that is appropriate for your experience and your strength level. For some exercises that you're very new to, that might be even lower than what you think you should be capable of. And three, you just use form that's appropriate for you. Nobody has form that is optimal for the next guy. Form is not a one size fits all. There are best practices and things that you can think about, but you have to know how to make these movements work for you. Just to preface everything in the video, these are three facts. Facts are not attacks, as Chris Jones likes to say. Number one has got to be the upright row. What do people say about this exercise? Oh, it'll destroy your shoulder joint. Oh, my rotator cuff. Da da da. Listen, people hurt themselves on an upright row because, just like we talked about, they use form that is terrible. They use form that isn't right for them, or they just use way too much weight and then they hurt themselves because of that. All three of those things have to do with your input that you are providing to the exercise not the exercise. The exercise didn't hurt you, you hurt yourself. Now, some of the more skeptical individuals may be saying, okay, if it's not dangerous, well, why shouldn't I do it instead of something like a lateral raise, which is a good shoulder exercise as well? Well, there are a few main reasons why I like using the upright row. First and foremost, it just looks cool. You know, that's a big motivator in anything that you do, just on a serious point, because anything that you enjoy more, you're going to push hard, you're gonna train for longer, and you're gonna get better at it. All of that adds up to you getting more jacked. Now what an upright row does very well that a lateral raise does not is work all three heads of your delt, so your front delt, side delt, rear delt, works your neck, works your upper back, your traps, and it also was something that I did specifically actually when I hurt my shoulder a little while ago to make my shoulder feel better just because I'm working that rear delt. I'm working the delts through a range of motion and the shoulder joints through a range of motion that just help blood flow go through the area and make it feel better. Now there are a few rules of thumb and tips that you can try with the upright road to make it most comfortable for you. Again, this is all preceded by what we talked about at the beginning of the video. Talking to your doctor, using appropriate load, using form that works for you. Stay in the scapular plane. I'm gonna throw up a little picture right here. The scapular plane is just a gigabrain way of saying like your arms are diagonal, but to the plane of your body. That's the simplest way I like to explain it. When you're in the scapular plane, your shoulders work the best, and then they also interact most naturally with your scapula because that's where your shoulder is attached to it. That's gonna keep your shoulders nice and loose as a goose and strongest. One other thing you can try is just simply using dumbbells or anything that lets you rotate your arms into the scapular plane. Some people, because of how we're built, they can't just easily do this and stay in the scapular plane with a barbell. That's totally fine, people were built differently. What you find with dumbbells is that you can move them in any direction through space. A lot of guys that you know ask for tips on the upright row, I tell them, hey, look, try it with dumbbells. Suddenly something that went from, no matter what grip width or range of motion or weight that they used, just didn't quite feel right, suddenly they can easily just move into the right position for them to get the most out of this movement. Number two is the good girl, bad girl machine. I've heard some wild, fallacious things about this exercise. It'll destroy your spine. Look, I don't know what long, tan, and handsome, 
pencil neck bookworm dweeb hurt their spine doing the good girl bad girl machine but in my mind you were just going to hurt yourself doing any exercise because this is one of the most foolproof movements that you can use to develop your adductor i think what's more likely is for someone to be doing the, the motion appropriately for the most part and just use too much load maybe rely too much on a stretch reflex and then they may strain their adductor doing that this exercise has been one of the most important additions to my training program. I post my lifts all the time on Instagram. My lower body strength and size has developed so much from training my adductor. When you look at the anatomy chart, actually, you got your quads, behind that is your hamstrings, to the side of that is your adductor. It gives you that pop and that width in the same way that your upper back and your rhomboids gives you that geodude graveler look for your back. So aesthetically, it's something that you want to train directly. It's just in general, something that's true with bodybuilding, which you don't isolate, you're not going to maximize or even really develop adequately, to be honest with you. All things being equal, if you're able to isolate, you should be isolated. Adductors give you so much pop out of the bottom on squats as well. It makes sense too, because it's like half of your thigh. Just imagine if you just took your, whatever your leg size is now, and you chop the muscle mass that you have literally in half, would you be stronger for it or weaker for it? Like, likewise, would you be stronger if you added literally another quad to your body? Of course you'd be stronger. So it's something that you need to include in your training program if you're serious about aesthetics and serious about strength. Now there are three tips that I like to implement with this exercise. First and foremost, it's gonna be using a lot of warmups. Most people do not isolate their adductors. It's not something that they're used to doing. So even if you are capable of maxing out the stack or close to maxing out the stack, which by the way, if you are, buy a gym pin. I'm not sponsored by them, but it just makes sense to throw that on there to be able to progressively overload it over time. You need to warm up. Adductors love blood flow. Your top set is gonna feel stronger if you adequately warm up to it. And it's just gonna make sure that you stay healthy. Another thing is, those pegs that they have on that machine are progressive range of motion. If you're new to the movement, don't start in the most stretched position that you can be in. Start with something moderate, something comfortable, push that hard and appropriately over time and work out until the point where you get out to a maximal range of motion and you can max the stack out again. That allows you to have longevity with the movement and also safety. The last tip, and I have to stress this specifically, because there are a lot of movements where using a stretch reflex, in my opinion, is a good idea. I haven't found that that is the safest thing to do with adductors to rely on your stretch reflex because it's not something that people typically train. So if you're new, especially if you're new to the adductor training on this machine, control your reps, ease into that eccentric, and then come up. You almost wanna use like a constant tension. Then once you get a little bit stronger over time, you don't have to control them as much, but that bottommost range of motion, you're always gonna make sure that you're lowering into that with control, even if you're being explosive everywhere else. Number three and number four are gonna be grouped together just because people say similar things about both these exercises. That'll destroy my shoulder. Just like with the upright row, no exercise is gonna you know, jump in front of you like the boogeyman or jump behind you like the undertaker and destroy your shoulders. They hurt you because of the input that you provide to them. Neither of these exercises are inherently dangerous. In fact, getting stronger at that end range with the dips or in this position with the behind the neck press is going to make you more resistant to injury. Just like with any other exercise on this list, you have to respect it and approach it just intelligently, to be honest with you. I don't know how else to say it, but that. Load them appropriately. What do both of these exercises provide? Number one, dips just are an immense upper body builder in general. Chest, triceps, shoulders, even a little bit of upper back as well. And plus, again, they just look cool. It's not something that you should take off the table just because they have a little bit of a learning curve to them. Newsflash, every exercise has a learning curve to it. You need to approach every exercise with the same caution, with the same wherewithal, with the same care. Dips are not exclusive to it just because a lot of pencil necks and DLs like to say that it is. What does behind the neck press do? Well, overhead press is the uber mensch lift in general, guys. I hate to break it to you, it's the coolest upper body lift. Coolest looking anyway. 
You do them though practically because they work your shoulders really well. What happens on an overhead press is you start to fatigue. You start to lay back. You start to get a gangster lean. That puts more stress on your lower back, which can hurt you. It also just turns the lift into a standing overhead, like standing incline press rather. Are you trying to work your upper pecs or are you trying to work your shoulders? Incline bench is real good for upper pecs. Do that if you want to work your upper pecs. But if you're trying to work your shoulders, keep that movement strict. Behind the neck press forces you to keep it in your shoulders and it also works your side delts even better than a standing like strict overhead press. It also works that upper back even better as well. With both of these motions, there's two tips that just apply unilaterally to both of them. One is have a movement in rotation that you can use to swap it out to keep the movement fresh. Another one is use a progressive range of motion. This applies to dips going deeper and also with behind the neck press going closer and closer to touching your traps. Over time, you're gonna build the ability to be able to push comfortably through these end ranges of motion and you should only go as deep as you can without pain or discomfort while also getting a good adequate range of motion on the lift. Down here, extra credit. Deep dips, extra credit. Aim for parallel with both. So parallel with behind the neck press is gonna bring you to about ear level. Parallel with dips obviously is gonna bring your arm parallel to the floor. I hope I need not illustrate that. Last but certainly not least, because this is easily the most demonized exercise just from you know, hack PTs, pencil necks on the internet that wanna make a quick buck on YouTube, uh, just anyone in general that wants to talk about an exercise that people shouldn't do, it's the leg press. Out of the millions of people that have done leg presses successfully, safely, and gotten jacked doing them, we have all watched the same video of someone breaking their legs backwards on the leg press. These people had hypermobile joints, and again, they used loads and form that was not adequate for what they were trying to do, and that's why they hurt themselves. The leg press did not break their legs. The input that you put into the leg press can, if you fall into the, the category of being someone with hypermobile knees, can hurt your legs. Let me pose you a question. Do you not lock out your elbows on bench press because you don't want your elbows to break? Do you not lock out your legs on squats because you don't want your legs to break? Do you not lock out on anything because you want your joints to break? No, that's absurd. There are very fringe scenarios where that is possible, but for the most part, you locking out your joints is gonna be the strongest position that your body can be in. Quite literally, your joints and your muscles are stacked that's the safest, strongest position that you're gonna be in. Are you walking out squats with your legs bent the whole time? That's dangerous, that's stupid. You should be locking out your joints because you're the strongest there. The benefits of a leg press are numerous, but the most important ones are you get to push your legs to their brink and beyond. Squats are a great exercise. Nothing compares to squats, as Tom Platts like to say. But it's hard to push your quads to their fullest extent with something like a squat unless you're really built for that movement and you can stay upright the entire time. Your lower back and the fatigue that you get from doing squats that's associated with that prevents you from being able to push your quads to their fullest extent a lot of the time. I know for me specifically, I'm very hip dominant on squats, meaning quite honestly, they look like a squat morning. This just is what it is. I got long femurs, long legs, it's just what it's gonna be. On something like leg presses, pack squats, any leg machine, I'm able to push my quads to their fullest extent. The quads are a lot like the upper back. They can take a lot more punishment than what you think they would be capable of. Now, another one is, it just gives variation to your training program. You can't get, well, you can get big off of just squats alone, but Natural Hypertrophy just made a great video about diversifying squats in a hypertrophy program. You have your squats, your meat and potatoes, because nothing compares to squats but you also have your variations as well. You got your hack squats, you got your SSB squats, you got all these variations, all these tools on the table. Leg press is an excellent tool in the toolbox that you should not be excluding because you think it's dangerous. I also much have a, a tip here for you to try as a video I want y'all to watch. I think it's called 13 Leg Press Mistakes by Dr. Mike Israel. Excellent video, he's a funny guy, he's a freaking doctor, he's jacked and stacked and he's known for coaching this movement very well. 
and he talks about a lot of the common mistakes that people make on this movement. Watch this video if you want to leg press and you want to know tips and tricks on how to make it work for you. You can do a lot more justice than I can at the end of this video. Go ahead and check that out. And that's it, y'all. Five dangerous exercises that just get you jacked if you load them appropriately. You consult your doctor before undergoing any physical activity to see if you're at an increased risk for snapping yourself up. And you just progress them smartly and use form that's good for you. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what are a few exercises that you're interested in trying now with this new mindset in mind of, hmm, it's not inherently dangerous if I approach it, not like a Sammy sausage head. If you have any questions about what we talked about in this video, please leave it down below. I'll see y'all later.